everybody will get a turn. Um, yeah. Uh, how much of the committee is uh, present? Do we have Recky? Everybody except um, Commissioner Anderson. Recky's here. Okay. Okay, cool. So we do have a quorum. Yes. Okay. Because I'm going to start. It's one thirty, so that seems to be what the starting time is. <laughs> so um, if er if everybody is ready, I'm ready to call it to order. Is there any ready. reason I shouldn't call it to order at this point? Okay. Uh, so let's go, staff and everybody. Let's call the meeting of the Health and Human Services Committee uh, to order of the Wayne County Commission. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, uh, Sherelle, do you want to do a uh, roll call, please, for the meeting? Yes. Commissioner Marecki? Here. Commissioner Dobb? Here. Commissioner Anderson? Commissioner Baker McCormick? Here. Chair Colleen? Here. You have a quorum present. Thank you very much. Before we go on to business, I'm going to uh, conduct this the uh, way we conducted the last meeting. Um, we'll hit each agenda item. Um, and then for questions, I'll start with the vice chair and then go around the horn to the other committee members uh, to make sure everybody has a chance uh, to ask any questions that they need on any of the agenda items. Um, I will also ask people to be on their toes about their mute button, please, um, so that uh, it, it's easier for the conversation, that we don't have background noise. Um, so if you're not going to be speaking or you're not speaking at the moment um, and you have a dog or kids or whatever, uh, pl please judiciously use your mute button. I would appreciate. All right, Madam Clerk, what's next on the agenda? B, approval of the April 22nd, 2020 meeting minutes. So moved. Pleasure. Support. Name, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Dob. Who moved? Dob moved, and I think I heard Marecki support. Yep. Marecki, yep. Yep. For, for the record. Any uh, additions, corrections, changes to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we've adopted the minutes. Madam Clerk? CEO business, there is none. Excellent. Item D1, under new business, requesting commission approval of Amendment 2 to a one-year grant agreement with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Now, this is that omnibus um, uh, CPBC, I guess, uh, budget that we get, uh, money that we get from the state every year to run programs on their behalf. And this is uh, taking in some more money for this. Um, anybody from administration want to uh, say something about this item? Give us your name and uh, say what you need to say about the item. Hi, Commissioner Killeen. This is Commissioner Haddis during the meeting. Welcome, uh, Commissioner Haddis. We're on uh, item one. Uh, does somebody from administration want to uh, discuss item one. Uh, Hi. The Commissioner, yes, Commissioner, go right for it. Can you, Commissioner Klein, can you hear me? This is Carol. Uh, Ms. Osterberry? Yes, I'm You here. got a job title? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I didn't know. Yes. Uh, hi, this is Carol from the Health, Health, Human, and Veterans Services. I am the health officer for the Public Health Division, and I can speak okay, on that'd this be Carol Osterberry. Yes. So what is this, uh, Ms. Osterberry? Right. As you said, this is amendment number two to the, um, you know, that big uh, comprehensive uh, contract that we have with Michigan Department of Health yeah. and Human Services. This provides additional funding in many programs, um, as you can see. 
that was America, emergency preparedness, sexually transmitted diseases, better born, water supply, um, essential local public health, wastewater, and then we did get um, with this amendment an additional hundred and fifty thousand dollars for COVID nineteen. For COVID, who? COVID nineteen. Well, oh, the for COVID nineteen. Yeah. yeah. Do we know how we want to spend that yet? Yes, actually, what this is going, this money is going to pay the salaries and fringes for the administration staff okay. who have been spent many, many hours on working on COVID-19 gotcha. all started in March. Beautiful. Let me go around the horn to the commissioners um, and see if there's questions. Commissioner Baker McCormick, you have a question on this? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Do we know what the amount is for salaries and uh, expenses to the employees for the yeah, COVID. Um, uh, yeah. Right, we're using that whole 150,000 trying to help support my salary, the medical director's salary, and our um, communicable disease uh, administrator salary, since those all come, you know, out of administration. Okay, so is it just for three individuals or is it for more than three? And those, top, those top three with this money. Okay, and do you know what the, the breakdown of that is? Is that three ways? I, or? Yeah, I do not have that in front of me. Okay, it, so it, do you know if it's by the number of hours or how, how it's going to be broken up? You know how you're, you're gonna go about doing that. Right, yes. I mean, we, I worked with management and budget on it and you know, we, we have been spending full time, hour, you know, full time hours on this since everything started happening in early March. So it is to support that time from beginning of March through, you know, this pandemic. Okay, and so this is in, a, in addition to what you already make, this will be overtime pay no. basically is- No, 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 no. Because this, these salaries, because we're management, we aren't paid from, um, you know, we aren't paid from a, a specific grant. So this is helping, you know, the uh, cost from the general fund. Yep. This is uh, Kamal Kepru, finance director. I can chime in if you yes, but Carol, but Carol just hit the point, uh, commissioner. When this extra money came in, it helped to alleviate the general fund and we can move so it's not additional money to her salary because as administrators their salary is spread across the department so when these funds came in we talked right. with the director Ms. Osterberry and we looked at the best way to allocate it so we just allocated to particular salaries and it allowed us to reduce the general fund allocation great gotcha because we had been that clarifies had been thank you so much that. Yeah, if I may, we had been, sp okay, sorry about that, Commissioner, sorry about stepping on you. Uh, Mr. Caparu, because we had been spending general fund dollars on uh, COVID, uh, you know, uh, COVID expenses, the extra time our staff needed to spend on that, correct? Oh, correct. And so this was a yeah. perfect opportunity to kind of recapture right. that. And as we go through this, I guess what we call pandemic, we will be shifting funds around to, to accommodate the best we can. Exactly. Great. Okay, that, yeah. that clarifies yes, it. That, that's it what that. I was trying to understand. Yes, thank you. Okay, Thanks, Carl. Uh, is, yep. Has Commissioner Anderson joined us yet? I'm here. Uh, I've been here. Commissioner Anderson, you have any do you have a question or two on this item? No, I'm good. Okay. Commissioner Dobb. No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Marecki. No questions. Thank you. 
Okay. What's the pleasure of the committee on disposing with this item then? I'll move approval, Marecki. Thank you. I'll, I'll support, Dob. Excellent. We have a motion in support. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Okay, that's been approved. Madam Clerk, item two. Item two, requesting commission approval of a grant award with the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Okay, somebody from administration want to uh, introduce this item, please? Good afternoon. This is Lisa Whitmore Davis, Senior Services Director. Thank you, Chairman Colleen, and good afternoon to all of the commissioners. This is a uh, item that has been um, in the system for some time. It is strictly a pass-through where Wayne County provided uh, funding that is received by Wayne County from HUD and then transferred to Samaritas to execute the family shelter for um, that program. So in essence, this is not new monies, but in, the monies finally arrived from HUD and the previous approval by this body expired and we had to set up a new budget line for it to land in for us to be able to transfer that money over to Samaritas, but it is a zero expenditure um, for Wayne County and for, of course, senior services, Mr. Uh, Chairman Colleen. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, since Samaritas runs this thing now, we get the grant mm -hmm. and then we give the grant to Samaritas to provide the services. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Baker McCormick, any questions on this item? No questions, thank you. Commissioner Anderson? I'm all set. Thank you. Commissioner Dobb? No questions, thank you. Commissioner Marecki? I'm all set, thank you. All righty, pleasure to the committee. Commissioner Anderson moves. I'll support Dobb. Dobb supports. Uh, one last chance for any questions. Any questions? It's been moved and supported. <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, Madam Clerk, item three, please. Item three, requesting commission approval of a grant award with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. Okay, administration like to introduce, please. This is Janelle Allen, but with Jennifer Caruso, I believe she's on the line, the Director of Clinical Services with Hi. Health, Human, and Veterans can speak to this grant. Hi, Excellent. it's Jennifer Caruso. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry, I had to unmute my microphone. Don't worry um, about it. Don't worry about it. It's the way this, these meetings are. Just keep rolling. Okay, so this is supplemental funding for the response to COVID. Um, and this is going to be used mainly for testing and supplies. Uh. COVID related? Yes, COVID related. Okay. Uh, any questions from commissioners? Commissioner uh, Baker McCormick. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so it, is the funds, when you say for testing, what, what does that mean? Is that for uh, first responders or employees or? Sure, sure. So I can, I, I can go into a little bit of detail on this. And I, I also have our clinic CFO on the Zoom as well. So he can jump in where I, where I may not have those uh, 
details. So the testing is uh, we have a contract request. So those tests obviously are part of the, the funding uh, from HRSA and the laboratory costs related to those tests. Um, PPE that we need to purchase from different vendors as well will be covered in that grant. And Brian um, Middow, I don't know if you want to add to that. Uh, yeah, just to reiterate, the purpose of these funds is for an immediate response to the COVID-19 um, outbreak. So uh, additionally, we've added um, some computers that will allow our providers to uh, enhance their telehealth capabilities as well. Uh, and that way, um, patients are able to make appointments via Zoom uh, as well as telephone. So uh, this is for immediate expenditure is the intention of it. And it is uh, mostly for personal protective equipment um, as well as the COVID-19 uh, test kits. And for the telehealth, uh, is is that does that also include mental health, or is yes, it, it for phys oh, both? Okay, both correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Anderson. Uh, the only thing I was going to ask is there. Are, do we now have the capability to handle people at the? Uh, the center in Wayne uh, for testing, COVID testing? Well, that's a great question. I was getting to that in my update. Um, do you want me to jump in there now? No, we'll okay. get it in the update. Okay. We're, we're going to be talk, talking about that, Commissioner, in the update we'll get on the last item on the agenda uh, to get a better understanding of all of this, right? Uh, not just Wayne, but everywhere in the county. So if you don't mind, Commissioner, we can hang on to that and we'll get that uh, a little later on the agenda. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Do you have other questions, Commissioner, on this item? Commissioner Anderson? He put okay, himself I'll on mute, so no. I don't think so. That's yeah. That's I'll, yeah, I'll take that as a no and go to Commissioner Dobb for questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have one quick question. Um, I just want to clarify that the dollars from this grant are for use for only the the two um, county health clinics. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. That's You're all welcome. I have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Marecki. No, thank you. Commissioner Dobb just asked my question. Thank you. Okay. Um, Uh, let's see, I had one question on this. You're going to buy some protective equipment. Uh, I assume that's for our staffs at the uh, FQHCs? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. And uh, did we procure this as a county? How did, uh, we're going to talk about this later on the agenda. I'm going to want this committee to leave this meeting with a good understanding of the procurement of PPE, how it's coming into the county, how it's been distributed. Um, how do you get this PPE? How, how do you get it? Does it come through Homeland Security? Is it procured another way? How are we bringing this into the county? Would you like me to handle this, Jennifer? Sure. Okay. Uh, with the FQHC... Name and title, please. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Brian Middaw, CFO of Wayne County Healthy Communities. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, now, the our primary HRSA grant that covers um, a great deal of, it covers essentially our salaries and rental costs. Outside of that, uh, our operations are pretty much uh, self-sustaining based on the revenue that we receive from insurance companies. Uh, for treating patients. So our operational costs come right out of the FQHC. So we uh, reach out to the vendors directly. We do not go through uh, the county's procurement process for our yeah. operational costs. 
Okay, so you have to do your own procurement on this. Yes, that is correct. Um, and while how, how was that? Is it how uh, bad the, is the procurement out there? I'm sorry. Could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, how bad is the procurement? How easy is it? How difficult is it to get? Uh, the supplies are depleted, so it is very difficult for us to get the appropriate uh, personal protective equipment for our providers. Uh, that PPE is also provided to our patients as well. Right, under this grant. Yes, that is correct. So this is for our FQHC employees and the people that are coming for services. Yes, that is Are the people that will benefit from this. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. That sounds good. Uh, pleasure of the committee on item number three, please. Move approval, so Dob. Support, McCormick. Moves, Marecki supports. One last this chance is for any questions. Monique McCormick supported. Oh, it was McCormick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. Commissioner. That's okay. Trying to do my best here. Trying to do my best here. Bob moves. Baker McCormick supports. Any further questions on this item? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Thank you. We'll move the agenda to item four. Uh, still sticking with our FQHCs. Uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Madam Clerk, would you like to uh, read the item, please? Introduce. Item four, requesting commission approval of a grant award with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. Okay, thank you. So now we've got uh, 559, I think I'm reading it right, million. Somebody from the, uh, or thousand. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, somebody from administration want to introduce this? Sure. Uh, it's Jennifer Caruso, division director and CEO of, of the clinics. Um, our focus on this grant is on safety and responding to COVID-19. And um, this grant also allows us to maintain and increase our clinics, clinics capacity to provide primary care. So the funding in, in this um, opportunity is not as restrictive as, as the former uh, opportunity. And I am going to uh, let our CFO um, answer any questions about this that you may have. All right, well, let's see what kind of questions we have then. Thank you. Commissioner Baker McCormick, you're up first. I don't have any questions right now. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Anderson, questions? None, none right now. Thank you, Commissioner Dobb. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just gonna ask the same question I asked before. Is this um, the funds for this grant restricted to only our two um, centers and, and nothing else? Yes, that is correct. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Marecki. I'm all set, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, my question is, you said this is going to expand our capacity for primary care. Um, I guess that means, uh, uh, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What are we going to be able to expand and how is it related to COVID? Uh, the intentions of this is to make sure that the FQHCs are not negatively impacted because uh, our patients are certainly abiding by the stay at home order. Um, so the purpose of this award is to make sure that we can sustain operations with no negative impact. Um, but there's also uh, additional hurdles given the, the COVID situation. So uh, they are making sure that we are able to operate as well as possible within our scope of operation with no negative impacts based on uh, the COVID outbreak. So essentially these expenses are going to be able to uh, take care of what we would typically be expending our revenue on um, that we were just speaking of with the, uh, the previous one. 
in regards to us uh, creating our generating our revenues from insurance is based on patients uh, that we serve. Um, this is essentially to make sure that we are able to continue our operations. Okay. Jennifer, Tom, uh, Coaches, it's Jennifer, Tom, Coaches, sure. oh, oh. Here? Mr. Coaches, yeah, please, thank you. Jennifer, is that okay with you, please? Yes. Okay. Please. I'm, I'm Coaches, I'm the COO of Wayne County Healthy Communities. And uh, good afternoon, all you commissioners. Hope everyone is safe and well. The other thing this grant allows us to do, which is, as Jennifer's pointed out, an expansion of services as we uh, are bringing on a PhD clinical psychologist, mm -hmm. which will partner also with the Wayne State University Psychology Physician Group uh, to provide services enhanced at our Hamtramck campus as well as uh, begun at our Wayne campus. So with this crisis, we're finding that uh, there's a lot of uh, concern out there about the future and, and maintaining your sanity. And I'm sure if you're anything like me, that's happening. So we are gonna, we're bringing on a clinical psychologist uh, for just that reason to expand those services at the same time. So although it's there to maintain, we also found a way to try to get this service out to both the Western Wayne community and the Hamtramck community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coaches. Uh, Mr. Coaches, if I could uh, restate this this way, uh, our patient, uh, the number of people coming to the uh, FQHCs is down, which means that revenue is down. So that uh, part of this grant is gonna be able to allow us to replace that revenue so we can stay at the same level and actually increase services a little bit as you were indicating with the psychiatrist but this is to make sure that because patient visits are down and billing are down that overall our clinics are not hurt financially because of that is That's that correct, correct interpretation okay okay excellent uh pleasure of the committee on this item yes mr chair i had a, a question uh, well, go right ahead. Thank you. Make them so, uh, in reference to the uh, reduced number of patients, are you seeing a increase um, in patients at all due to the mental health issues related to COVID or physical issues? Want me to take it, Jennifer? Yes. All right, uh, thank you for that question. It's a great one. The behavioral health visits actually are our busiest component right now in our Hamtramck Clinic. Uh, they continue to be done both uh, telephonic as well as on uh, Facebook, and I guess you could say it's telemedicine, as well as we have some still coming into the clinic for their appointments. That remains our busiest component right now at the Hamtramck Clinic to answer that question. Our primary care is starting to come back a little bit because uh, we, we treat a lot of chronic disease and that's the intent. Uh, but behavioral health is number one right now. And do you only service um individuals from that community uh, as far as for mental health, uh, the uh, telehealth line? No, we, we, we take all comers. Uh, so we don't have any boundaries or limits. If they're interested in coming and becoming one of our patients, uh, we take them. Okay. And do you have any communication that you can forward to us to, to get that information? out at all? Do you have anything related to COVID and, you know, its impact on the community and, and maybe we can get that out so that they know that they can call the center for help? We'll work on that again. We, uh, we have actually uh, working with uh, Mike McGalrath from Wayne County Marketing and Communications. We've, I believe a press release is being released as well as our Facebook page, but we'll make sure that we, uh, 
I'll work with Jennifer to make sure the commission all has something available uh, which you can share with your, all your constituents. I know we have an email version of our flyer uh, as well as the press release. So maybe with everyone's permission, we could share that, Jennifer. Yes, absolutely. That would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Tom. And I'll just, I'll just follow up on this, Mr. Coaches. We ask this all the time. Um, can we, yeah, hopefully we can just get to where automatically we get from administration uh, both a PDF and uh, something like a JPEG file that commissioners can share on their social media platforms uh, in order to get the word out about what the services are at these two clinics. Um, so if you can just hit all 15 commissioners with okay. something they could either use uh, to email to people or to put up on their social media accounts uh, so we can spread the awareness of these two clinics and what's being offered. Um, hopefully we'll get to a time where that's just automatic and it gets done. We don't have to ask each time. All right. Uh, pleasure of the committee on this item. So moved. I think that was Commissioner Baker McCormick. Did I get it right? Yes, you got it right. <laughs> oh, Support, wow. Dob. Yeah, that's my one for the day, Commissioner Baker McCormick. It's all screw-ups from here. Uh, <laughs> all right, we have a motion and support. Uh, one last pause for any last-minute questions that people have thought of. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions, please. All right, hearing none, the motion has unanimously passed. Uh, Madam Clerk, what's up next? I'm discussion with the Department of Health, Human, and Veteran Services about the actions it's taking regarding the COVID-19. <coughs> okay, um, is uh, Mr. Sturdivant with us here? Did he hold on to, uh, did we get Mr. Sturdivant? Yes, Commissioner uh, Tad Sturdivant, Director of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, is on the line. Thank you, sir. We're, we're with you in a sec. Uh, I want committee members to be aware, uh, last week in preparing for this and preparing for reports, uh, I sent a couple of emails around with some bullet points, both to the Health Department and to uh, Mr. Sturdivant over at Homeland Security uh, with uh, some bullet points and some questions. Uh, I shared those with Vice Chair Baker McCormick so she could see what I was asking about. Um, I know you were at the previous public uh, safety meeting, uh, Mr. Sturdivant, but I think also uh, I uh, wanted to get from you, um, you know, because we hear about PPP, PPE all the time. Uh, you are the main entry point into the county for PPE. So I wanted to hear from you how the procurement is going um, and uh, what what challenges and what you're able to do uh, in your department uh, to help with this. Uh, I asked about procurement. I asked how you distribute them through the county, who gets them, the courts, the sheriff, the clerk. Does everybody get them? Is it just employees? Uh, I also asked you if we're, getting ready to purchase any testing equipment or have. Uh, so uh, with that, Mr. Sturdivant, uh, turn it over to you for uh, a report on that. Excuse me. All right. Thank you, Excuse Commissioner me. Colleen. Excuse me, uh, Committee Chair. The, the this is Janelle okay. Allen. I'm sorry I, to interrupt, I, but I did want to clarify okay. that um, Procurement Director Aaron Wagner is on the line to talk about the actual procurement process. Because I know that, that he be handles great. that, you, and I know that uh, Tad in his area, then he handles the whole ordering, and meaning as far as accepting orders from the various departments, communities, elected officers, and the distribution. But Aaron is available to discuss the whole procurement process. That would be excellent. You know, there is so much out there uh, in the media every day about not getting enough and who has them and who doesn't and how we have to go about it. Uh, so I did want to get a picture today 
uh, about what we're doing for procurement. Um, so uh, thank you for that. Uh, our procurement director is there if we need him, but let's start with uh, Mr. Sturdivant, please. All right, thank you again, and uh, thank you, uh, uh, Janelle, for that, uh, for that lead in. Uh, Commissioner, you know, you and I had a uh, conversation last week, and uh, I will uh, go through and answer uh, your particular bullet point questions and then open myself up uh, to any questions that maybe I didn't cover or anything that maybe needs further explanation. But uh, let me just start off with saying something uh, like a little opening statement, and uh, that is uh, – Wayne County Department of Homeland Security Emergency Management has been working feverishly uh, since uh, the beginning of March or right around March 10th when the disaster first uh, declared. Uh, we have a staff of, uh, of seven uh, people, and we work hand in glove with uh, Aaron Wagner, our procurement uh, director, as well as with uh, public health. And as everyone knows, uh, this uh, from a national level, down through the state, down through the county, uh, public health has taken a, uh, a lead in the disaster. However, we support their efforts. Uh, one of the major uh, responsibilities of Homeland Security Emergency Management at this point is the procurement and allocation of PPE. And when I talk about disasters, I always talk about phases because we have entered several phases uh, since this disaster started. How does, uh, how does um, Homeland Security Emergency Management procure the PPE? Uh, we work hand-in-glove with the State Emergency Operating Center, which is the state of Michigan. Uh, we have sought and obtained donations. Uh, the county has uh, made uh, purchases, and we do that through a system called the MySense, which is the Michigan Critical Information structure uh, system in which we all put this in a computer base and are able to keep track. So from the standpoint of, uh, of how this system works is, uh, number one, uh, we provide PPE to every jurisdiction in Wayne County. That was our first phase uh, as we uh, began, um, meaning that if a jurisdiction required uh, for first responders and only first responders at that time, if they require PPE, they would contact our office. Our office would receive a shipment placed in a computer, receive a shipment from the state of Michigan, from the state emergency operating center, and then we would set up a distribution site at our warehouse in Southgate. I have to say that the uh, state procurement process has been very slow at times and the PPE has not flowed in a steady basis. Therefore, we have uh, sought uh, donations and achieved some tremendous donations, which I will talk about uh, a little bit later. How much has the, uh, the county spent on procurement? Uh, I did talk with uh, Mr. Wagner last night, and he's on the line, so if I get this wrong, he'll be able to uh, correct me. But approximately uh, about $1.2 million dollars has been uh, spent in uh, acquiring uh, the KN95 mask, and that is a purchase uh, for Wayne County uh, employees. Uh, we've also, my department has expended, we uh, have very little general fund, but we've expended money for the N95 mask. These costs, once we get to that phase of the disaster, uh, we think will be eligible, and the reason why I say think is because we uh, participate twice a week on eligibility conference calls with the state. They give us what they think will be eligible, but all of that has not been determined by FEMA at this point. Uh, we will recur, re, um, request uh, all reimbursements for supplies spent, and coming from FEMA, that is a 75% reimbursement where the jurisdictions will have to take uh, 20, will have to pay for 25%. What is the method uh, that we use to allocate uh, PPE? The method we did is we took a survey um, of every jurisdiction uh, in, the, uh, in the county, including the city of Detroit, and found out how many police officers, how many firefighters, and how many uh, EMS uh, uh, employees do we have. 
and uh, that number came to 6,656. When we first made push out for PPE to every jurisdiction, again, including the city of Detroit, we simply uh, took a, based upon our inventory, and said if we were to give each first responder 10 masks, uh, that would hopefully last them a little over a month, uh, that we did that. So we just simply uh, got how many officers, police officers, firefighters, EMS, uh, in each particular agency, and made that push from our warehouse, which was a, uh, which was a lot of work, but we were able to do it successfully. Uh, we also uh, get requests from them some, those same departments. So if a department should have a request, even when we have not made a push, we have earned 100% of those requests. Again, um, as we move to a, another phase, we begin to provide uh, PPE for uh, Wayne County uh, CEO departments as well as Wayne County elected offices. And we have provided uh, that PPE as well. We distribute um, to more than just first responders, as I stated. Uh, we moved to another phase where uh, my office became responsible not only for first responders, but also to, for funeral homes as well as long-term care facilities. Uh, we distribute uh, PPE to Region 2 South, and Commissioner, when I spoke to you about that, uh, Region 2 South is a state health care coalition, and their primary responsibility is to uh, support our local hospitals, EMS workers, medical facilities, and nursing homes. So we donate a tremendous amount of supplies uh, to our Region 2 Care uh, South Healthcare Coalition, who we work hand in glove with, uh, that provides that um, PPE to long-term uh, care facilities. Uh, we also, uh, at this point, we have not moved to the phase of providing PPE to private businesses. Uh, we are not at that point. Um, so we do not provide that for uh, private businesses. Uh, testing, uh, all of your testing questions uh, are referred, I would refer to uh, public health because the department supports public health, but public health deals with vaccination and testing. Just- Are, are you purchasing testing equipment, sir? No, that is, uh, that is done by public health. So I am not okay. involved in the purchasing of uh, a testing equipment at this time. Just for your information, donated supplies that we've been able to secure, and these are just some of the uh, large donations. General Motors provided 4,000 face shields, 85,000 surgical masks. DTE provided 360,000 KN95 masks. McKesson Corporation um, provided a donation of 104,000 N95 masks with a very prescriptive that these um, N95 masks would only go to first responders, and I actually had to sign a waiver to ensure that that would happen. And Magna International has provided 8,640 uh, face shields. Um, just uh, briefly, what we have uh, allocated out from our office and our logistical team, which is a person team, we provided to jurisdictions throughout the county over 300,000 face masks, 322,000 gloves, 8,000 gallons of hand sanitizer, about 6,000 bottles of hand sanitizer, 5,000 face shields, 3,000 canisters of bio wipes, um, and about uh, 3,100 booties. The booties are those uh, that uh, medical personnel might wear on their feet so that they don't um, track any of the COVID-19 um, on their feet. So we've been um, very busy. Uh, we've worked seven days a week uh, since uh, uh, early March. When supplies come out of, uh, out of Lansing, we don't know the time that they're coming, the day that they're coming, or necessarily what's on the shipment. So many times we report back to our warehouse on Saturday and Sunday evenings 
uh, only to unload a semi and then be able to determine what's on it, as well as um, our office has been deemed the main delivery point for all of Wayne County. So that means for our other emergency manager programs, which is just like Wayne County, those would be Trenton, Canton, Livonia, and um, I think I said Dearborn, Trenton, Canton, and, and Livonia. Uh, they also have their supplies shipped to our warehouse. We unload it, package it, and then they come to pick it up so that they can disseminate to their uh, communities. So quite a, uh, quite a bit of uh, work, but it is uh, important work, and uh, we have not received complaints from our first responders. Uh, we hold a weekly conference call with every jurisdiction in Wayne County with their local emergency managers. We communicate with them on a daily basis, and in those conference calls, we, we talk about PPE every week. We talk about logistics, how they are to secure that PPE, and what we can do to assist them. And with that, that concludes my preliminary uh, statement, yeah. and um, I would uh, open for questions if you have questions, sir. Oh, we will have questions, Mr. Sternaband. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of clarifying questions at the beginning here before I go around the horn. When sure. you say when you say jurisdictions, is that limited to cities and townships, or is there that some is, other governmental nope, jurisdiction? That is, that is all 43 jurisdictions in Wayne County. Okay. Uh, I'll ask people to be aware of their mute button, please. Those of you that are not muted, uh, we've gotten feedback coming through. Um, the other thing is, uh, Mr. Sturdivant, well, somebody's got to mute. This is, somebody's got to mute. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll get a tracer on them and we'll find that person. Um, Mr. Sturdivant, uh, how difficult would it be? I, I can't conduct business this way. Can you just uh, mute everybody except the speaker, please? Uh, for now, yeah. Uh, One second, so I can unmute a few people. Commissioner Colleen, can you hear me? I can, thank you. Okay, I muted everybody and those are the people that can unmute themselves, I'm sure they will do so. And I unmuted you because you call from the phone, so. Okay, so I can go back to Mr. Sturdivant now? Yes. All right, Mr. Sturdivant, you with me? Did he Can you hear me, Commissioner? There, or yeah, you there you go, Mr. Sturdivant. Great. Um, how difficult – can you provide us, please, a spreadsheet that shows where you're distributing this? I think uh, a lot of commissioners would like to know how much PPE is coming in uh, to their local communities through the county. I think that would be good information. Um, and then you're talking about also distributing uh, to elected officials now. Uh, can you provide a quick spreadsheet to show how much PPE is being distributed to where in the county? Yes, uh, we work off of uh, spreadsheets and I can provide that and we'll provide it uh, through the chair. Uh, where it would show each jurisdiction, including Detroit, uh, how much PPE they have received, and, and, as well uh, as can... as well as the Wayne County uh, elected officers, such as the treasurer, the courts, probate right. court, etc. And is that for the employees in those departments? Uh, what we do is I take a look, um, and it is a it's very fluid. So I always take a look at what supply we have on hand and the requests from the individuals. For, fir for okay. first responders, we provided a push with several formulas. With the Wayne County offices and departments, uh, I rely upon the department head uh, making a request 
as well gotcha. as our uh, elected representative. And same with commission as well. Yeah, and if you could include in that, please, how many are we going, how many are we donating, I guess you said, to that region two to get it out to hospitals and uh, so the complete, how much are we getting in and where is it going to? A great little spreadsheet on that would be good. Yes, sir, and um, we have on region two uh, how much we've donated to region two so they can provide to hospitals. Yeah. And region two also gets their own supplies uh, from the state of Michigan as well. Our donation yeah. is augmenting region two. Yeah, but I think, you know, uh, we get a lot of questions as public officials, what is the county doing? So yeah. I think the more the more information commissioners have, the better the story is that's being told out there and the correct story. All right, I'm gonna step back and we'll, we'll go around the horn. Uh, Vice Chair Baker McCormick, you're up first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Sherman, you uh, said that we also give uh, equipment or PPE to Detroit. Yes, we have uh, provided the city of Detroit um, uh, personal protection equipment. And in fact, provided the Detroit based upon the form that I spoke of 50,000 N95 masks. And let me tell you why. When I received that donation from the McKesson Corporation, which is out of uh, Richmond, Virginia, they received their supplies from FEMA. And that was a very prescriptive donation that stated that if they give us this, we would have to provide it to all the first responders in, uh, in Wayne County. So the city of Detroit did receive uh, a, um, a portion of that donation. Okay, and so who, when, when you say the city of Detroit, is it a certain department that was uh, given okay. the, and what, what, what was that that we gave them? Sure, we gave the city of Detroit, first of all, 50,000 N95 masks, and each jurisdiction in Wayne County has an appointed emergency manager, even those communities that report through the county. And... So I work with 43 different people in emergency management, and they are the ones that make the request for their jurisdictions, the ones that come to our warehouse to pick up so that we don't overwhelm our staff. They're the ones that I provide the PPE through. So the PPE for the city of Detroit provided to the Detroit Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management and it would have been their responsibility to provide that to the city police and the firefighters and EMS. And the percentage of donated PPE equipment versus what we purchased, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. We've purchased um, over 500,000 KN95 masks. They have not all arrived to our warehouse, so the percentage of donated supplies would be greater, I don't have an exact figure, but it would be greater than what the county through Mr. Wagner in purchasing purchased um, from um, a corporation that uh, he worked with. Okay, so the, the 500,000 masks that we purchased uh, that was that was all that we purchased. No, that's not all. That, that's the mass that you purchased. Uh, the county or Mr. Wagner is also in the process uh, through me of uh, purchasing hand sanitizer, gloves, and other things um, related with the PPE. Okay, but thus far, it's just right now we have purchased mass, five hundred thousand mass. That is correct. The hand sanitizer that uh, we've allocated out, and remember, uh, I think I said over a thousand gallons of the hand sanitizer actually came from the state of Michigan. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, maybe it is time to bring the purchasing director in real quick before we go uh, to any more. Oh, and Mr. Sturdivant, if you could. Uh, and maybe this is you or maybe it's Mr. Wagner, uh, that a percentage 
of PPE that's coming in that's donated uh, as opposed to what we're buying, I think that would be uh, of interest too to report. Uh, Mr. Wagner, outside of Homeland Security, uh, what kind of purchases are you doing to bring uh, PPE into the county? Um, I'll let it go with that, Mr. Wagner. All right, through, uh, through the chair, uh, Aaron Wagner, Procurement Director. Um, so I've been working with the various departments. Um, one, we've been going through and doing deep cleaning and fogging of all the county buildings to ensure that, um, you know, there's uh, any viruses, and this includes uh, the, the, the jails, the juvenile detention facility, the Guardian Building, 400 Monroe, um, the HAB building and the glass house for DPS, uh, making sure that, that we have been doing additional cleanings for those, um, as well as the foggings. Um, we've purchased thermometers for the courts, we've purchased for the thermometers for the health department um, and for uh, other various offices through the county. Um, you know, the, the majority of what we've purchased so far, or at least the lion's share of the expenditure, has been the 500,000 masks. And uh, the way that the county approached uh, that purchase, uh, I worked with the procurement director through Oakland County and the procurement director through the city of Detroit, and we combined our, uh, our requirements or our, our numbers to leverage into a much larger number so we are able to negotiate a much better price point from this. Um, a lot of the equipment is coming directly from China so it has very long lead times. Um, a lot of uh, the operators over in China are requiring or requesting um, expenditures uh, or the, the, the dollars to be paid up front. Um, to this date we have not, uh, it, we have not had that issue at all. We've worked with suppliers that are uh, Michigan based that have been traditional PO. Um, so we've not put any deposits down. We've not put any uh, money up front for any of these uh, emergency expenditures. And we've been able to negotiate a price um, for the example with the CAN 95 masks. Um, our, our cost delivered is $2.05, whereas the state of Michigan's uh, lowest CAN 95 mask price was two dollars and fifty cents, and that did not include delivery charges. So holy cow! Yeah, we, so we we are working, um, you know, with our regional partners and really trying to make sure that we're stretching the county dollars as as as, as and spending them as judiciously as possible. Uh, when you say regional, and I'm gonna go back to commissioners in a sec here, but you use the word regional. Mm -hmm. Is this the region that the governors put together of Midwest states? No, this is quite honestly uh, the procurement director for uh, Oakland County, myself, and the city of Detroit, and just, you know. Oh, okay, so we're talking Southeast Michigan. We're exactly. working together. Exactly. Okay, excellent. Uh, so thank you, uh, Mr. Wagner. Um, uh, did did you have an additional question, uh, Commissioner Baker McCormick, now that we've heard from the purchasing director? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The monies that we have spent so far, do you have the dollar amount for all of the equipment and uh, COVID-related spending? To, to date... Um, it's just shy of about two million dollars, and so these are emergency expenditures. Um, the departments will be sending them through TCM, so they're they're going to be coming in um, through the system as receiving files to the commission. Okay, and so um, the two million was spent out of the general fund and then we're being reimbursed with the dollars that we have coming that, in is that, that correct that that is correct um all of the the purchases to date according to the cares act 
are eligible. Um, I understand they're also looking into C, and this is more into Tad's realm. Um, of these, they, they're either CARES Act expendable or they're uh, uh, FEMA fund uh, reimbursable. So it's, it's one of those two buckets, but none of these expenditures will come out of the general fund moving forward. Or we will be reimbursed for all of these, I should say. Okay. And so for the we, deep we cleaning, yes. cleaning that was done, um, do we have information as to what that process looks like from the contractor that, that did the cleaning? It, yes, we have, we have um, a list of what, uh, what chemicals or, or what processes they use, as well as um, moving forward, uh, you know, what, um, from a janitorial perspective, what cleaning solutions they're using uh, to work on the offices currently. Great, because I would be interested in seeing the actual um, uh, chemicals that that are being used uh, and just ensuring that, you know, that they're not overly toxic and we may have a, another set of issues with people getting sick behind the, uh, the chemicals. So I, I just want to see if we can get a clarification on what, what those chemicals are. Yeah, Commissioner, I'll, I'll, I'll work to pull together a list and, and provide it. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Anderson, coming your way for questions. Uh, yes. What I mentioned earlier, I'd like to see if I get a response from someone uh, in the health department. Uh, is about the uh, COVID testing. If, if we're doing that down at the uh, Vinoy Road location now in Wayne, uh, I think that was what I had mentioned earlier. Hi. Okay. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is Carol. Yes. That, Go ahead, Ms. Um, Osterberry. Thank, thank you, Carol Osterberry, Health Officer. Yes, at that Wayne location, through the uh, federally qualified healthcare clinic that is there, they will begin that testing on Monday, May 18th. And uh, my understanding is it is appointment only. Uh, Jennifer and or Tom, if you have more of the details on that, but you know, it's going to be right there at the uh, Health Administration building on the corner of Benoit and Van Born Road. Okay, and is that by appointment, I would assume, uh, or does it have to have a doctor's letter, or how do they do that? I'm, my understanding uh, is it's appointment. Oh, Jennifer, are you there? Yes, yes, yes I'm here. Um, excuse me, I had to get my microphone unmuted. Um, yes, we are starting testing at the Wayne location, effective. We're actually testing on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So those are our two testing days in the Wayne location. And that begins on Tuesday, uh, May 19th. And it is by appointment only. Uh, we can um, send you the flyers as well. Uh, with We have one call in um, appointment phone number for both locations. So we have schedulers on hand that are scheduling appointments for patients. You do not need to be a, a current patient of the clinic to get tested. And they are free of no charge to the patient. Okay, you said you'll be sending, will you send all commissioners a uh, copy of the flyer? Absolutely. All right, thank you. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Carol. <laughs> Anything else, Commissioner? That's all I have right now, thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna repeat my request that they come as a PDF and or a uh, Word file, but also a uh, social media ready file, please. Um, all right, moving on, Commissioner Dobb, questions on the Homeland Security and procurement going on here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have one question for Aaron Wagner regarding procurement. Um, so Aaron, you were talking about um, the prices that we were getting for, um, I believe, the N95 masks, and you mentioned that we're getting a better price than what the state of Michigan um, is, is paying. Are you able, so are you able to look at what, what their contracts are and what they're getting, um, 
what kind of prices they're getting and, and kind of compare. And then if, this, if you see the state is getting a better price, can you go through their vendors? Yeah, so there, there's been a really good open communication between uh, the chief procurement officer at the state of Michigan and, and myself. Um, we're, we're personal friends on a side note. So oh. we, we, we've actually had long discussions on, uh, you know, which suppliers uh, we've had good luck with, which suppliers we've had bad look, uh, luck with. You know, it, it's, it's interesting too, because when this whole, all started, the state of Michigan had placed several orders and then they ended up getting canceled because of FEMA. And so at, at the same time, I was working with Oakland County and the city of Detroit to get our orders in. And so, you know, at the back, on the back end, we've been able to compare notes and, and share learnings uh, across the board. Okay, great. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Marecki. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have two questions. Um, this Wayne location that's opening up on the 18th, um, by appointment, these people are symptomatic, correct? Hi, it's Jennifer Caruso again. Uh, no, we're testing all individuals. You are. Okay, yeah. you know, I heard, just an antidote. Um, I heard uh, yesterday on the, um, on the news, there's two people in the White House right now that have tested positive for COVID. And it was interesting because the one woman, I guess last week they've tested everybody and it was, let's say a Thursday. And her test was negative, and the next day she came down with symptoms, they said, and they tested her, and she was positive. So I just thought that was, I've been trying to get a handle on how sensitive are these tests before symptoms start appear, appearing. You know, how sensitive beforehand are they? But anyway, my second question is for Tad. Um, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, a few weeks ago, Livonia, Livonia's got a lot of these deaths, the second um, in, hot, in number compared to Detroit. And a lot of it's because of the 28 nursing homes and nursing facility or home facilities we have. And I'm wondering, are, do you know if they're all up to date with getting their gowns, enough gowns? I know that was a concern a couple weeks ago. I know you talk to Brian Kahn all the time, but have you heard anything about them lacking in gowns for the nursing homes? Mm -hmm. Uh, Commissioner, I do talk to Brian Kahn, the local emergency manager for Livonia and their own 390 program. And uh, we were on a state conference call with the state, I believe, last Friday. And gowns are scarce all over the country. And in fact, we were advised FEMA cannot even put their hands on gowns right now. I have not talked to Brian specifically about gowns because he has not asked me specifically about gowns. But just know that even though uh, Livonia is their own 390 program and can uh, get their supplies directly from the state, we have supplied Livonia based upon their needs and based upon what you just stated with some of their stats. We have provided them with uh, masks, gloves, and other things, but I do know that gowns are very hard to come by. I don't know what his need is with gowns. Oh, okay. And I, did, I didn't talk to Brian. I talked to Mayor Brosnan. Um, so I, I just was looking for kind of an update. So they have been very scarce and they continue to be so then, huh? Thank you. Yes, they are. They are very scarce as of Friday. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Anything else, Commissioner? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I just have a couple of questions here. Uh, the purchasing director uh, referred to a number in the low two million is what we have spent on PPE so far. Uh, is that inclusive of what Homeland Security has been buying? Can I address that uh, first, Commissioner? This is Tash. Anybody that knows the answer can address it. Yes. Yeah, Homeland Security. Uh, we we have not purchased um, PPE, so we receive our PPE from the state of Michigan, which we don't purchase that. That comes I from see. through the state down to the county. We've also you're, you're a uh, clearinghouse. Yes, yes, and we've also secured okay. donations 
So we don't go out and purchase. The mass for Wayne County was actually purchased by Mr. Wagner. Okay, great. That answers that question. I am curious as to how much, uh, when you report back to us, uh, how much how much is being donated. Um, are we keeping track of something like, uh, now that we're commu in communication with our, our local communities, and you referenced, hey, you know, they got enough masks to last from maybe a month. Do we have like a weekly burn rate that we're going through in the county of how much we need of all this on a weekly basis, a bi-weekly basis, uh, so that we can plan and hopefully get ahead a little bit of uh, what is needed out there? Do we have, are we dealing with uh, uh, parameters like that? Yep, let me, uh, let me address that. Uh, dealing with 43 different communities with 43 different ways of handling business with maybe yeah. 43 different policies because we don't write the policies once we uh, uh, provide the PPE to the community, uh, that would be very challenging. So one of our goals um, based upon our uh, supply is we try to supply. When we talk to the local EMs, we say we don't want to supply you for six months and then another community might have a need, we try to supply them on a 30-day basis uh, so that they have enough supplies for 30 yeah. days. We, we have, we're trying to figure out a burn rate, but right now um, I'm not coming yeah. up with anything conclusive because, again, they all work differently and have different missions. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because, yeah, the way things are, you're right, you know, it's a little chaotic and then, you hear from the local communities and you go, I don't know, state of Michigan just pulled up with a truck. We'll see if, we'll see if your stuff is on there or not. So that's our daily experience. <laughs> yeah. That's a very difficult situation you're in. Uh, Mr. Sturdivant, I want to thank you for taking the time uh, to help us with this. Uh, I think the follow-up information will be real good. As you know, people are hungry for information, right? and what's going on out there. And so I think the more we can tell people about how Wayne County is responding to this and what we're doing, I actually think it's helpful to people and it lowers the, uh, uh, the anxiety that's out there. Like, is anybody doing anything, you know, kind of thing that uh, some people, some public member might have. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for the job you're doing. Sounds like you're having a very fun Seven day a week job going on to try to keep this floating, but it's uh, so important that public servants are up to the job and handle it competently. And uh, I want to thank you for that, sir. Thank you Mr. very much, Chair. and uh, it was uh, our honor yeah. to uh, to be here this afternoon. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Mr. I, I heard Chief. a voice. Yes, this is uh, Commissioner Baker McCormick. I just had a um, couple of follow up questions Please. I wanted to ask right quick. Um, in the testing uh, supplies, um, do we have a cost of an amount of testing equipment that we have purchased so far for Wayne County? This is Janelle Allen, Chief Operating Officer with the Wayne County Executive's Office. We actually have not procured testing equipment yet, nor test. We've actually been fortunate to be able to use the options offered by the city of Detroit at the state fairgrounds and through their rapid testing. We are now finalizing plans to procure our own machines and services, but to date we have not bought testing. Okay, and um, as far as the testing at the county jail, I understand that we are testing inmates did, did we get more testing kits like from the city? Who, who are we and how are we coordinating that? Uh, Jennifer Caruso is going to address that, but I can answer uh, concisely here that Jordan, you know, we have WellPath who provides the medical services for inmates. So they, under their contract, they were testing inmates, prioritizing inmates who are symptomatic or who are known to have been a close contact. Through that process, they to date have tested, I believe, approximately 116 inmates. However, we just had a wonderful opportunity through a partnership with Wayne State 
and through some funding from a, a community foundation where they have funded testing for all inmates currently in our jails in the three divisions, division one, two, and three. That testing occurred this past Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So that testing was funded by a foundation who then um, contracted with Wayne State University who led the testing. Thank you for that. Um, and then wow. will we, uh, once we do get testing, are we looking at using that, those test kits for um, like senior complexes or uh, what, what are we looking at using the testing kits for? Employees or what does that look like? I believe all of the above. Initially, we will be focusing on employees and meaning if right now that we are testing employees through the state fairgrounds, the city of Detroit's option. We started first with sheriff's deputies who the counties, we considered the county's first responders. So those were the sheriff's office deputies, those on the road patrol, as well as in particular, those who are working in jails. They were the first priority. We also then included the JDF staff who work at the juvenile detention facility on the care and custody side, as well as the medical staff there. We started testing actually the week of, it was a Saturday, April 4th. That was at the state fairgrounds. The city then opened up rapid testing, which unfortunately they have had very limited um, capacity to allow us to use that option. So we have actually limited that to sheriff's deputies who need a return to work clearance. So primarily, again, we've been using the state fairgrounds. Also, the Wayne State uh, Physicians Group has gone around, and I call them pop-up testing sites, where they'll have remote sites for a day or two, and they also help to test with deputies. So one day, they were over at Division Three, and they have just taken this upon themselves with, I believe, community foundation funding to offer these pop-up test sites, and they have uh, dedicated those to first responders. With regard to our own um, testing, we will focus on then employees outside of the first responder group. When the city opened up their state fairgrounds testing for employees of essential businesses, we've been able to utilize that as well. So beyond, so the sheriff's deputies, they were constantly, they would get tested regularly, as well as when they have return, need return to work clearance. But now we've been able to open it up to employees who are working in person and have some exposure to the public. So we've been able to open this up to pretty much all the executive departments, again, with employees working in person and all of the elected offices. One of my responsibilities during this pandemic has been to coordinate and facilitate testing of employees. So I really do have oversight and a handle on where all of our employees are going. I do know that I believe employees with every elected office, as well as the Department of Public Services, the Department of Health, Human and Veterans Services, have been tested, meaning employees who work in person during the pandemic. I would say that over 1,200 employees have been tested through one of these options. When we have our testing equipment out there, we would then expand this to all employees, even if they are working remotely. And the goal is ultimately to have this widely available to the public. And yes, we would also be looking at long-term care facilities to the extent that we can help there. You may be aware that the state does have an initiative focused on the long-term care facilities. They had actually ordered testing and they planned to, to order testing for all long-term care facilities, including nursing homes in Wayne County and other counties. They have told us that they still plan to do that. However, they then changed course and their first priority has been inmates in correctional facilities. But I've been told by our contact at the Michigan State Police that the nursing homes are to be the next priority. So the state plans to order test kits that will get delivered directly to the long-term care facilities because they have their own nursing staff who can take the specimens. The state's kits will have all of the um, tools needed to actually send the test kits or the specimens off to a lab and then the nursing home will get the results back directly. So we are working closely with the state and hoping to keep that on track where all the residents and employees in nursing homes in Wayne County can be tested. Great, and last question. Do you foresee that there will be a problem in getting these uh, testing kits when, when you decide to, 
to order? And will we be partnering with the Oakland County or the city of Detroit to reduce the, the cost of testing kits? Well, actually, who we're looking to, who we're partnering with are more hospitals, because you actually have to have, you can imagine, a certain area where you're going to maintain the machines, where you're going to use the machines. You have to have a certain level of credentials to be able to take the specimens, as well as to operate the machines. So after exploring a variety of options, we think it has been, um, our best option is, again, to partner with hospitals, because they have all of the necessary equipment, the staff, the credentials, the knowledge, the skill to operate. So that is where, so then the, the hospital, they have their labs with which they work. And then that's where they were getting, actually they're coordinating with the machines that we plan to buy. We'll be buying directly from those manufacturers because my understanding is one test kit does not fit all. And specimens also like even the nasal swabs, there are different types and it really depends on the type of machine. So you really have to coordinate and be aligned with the type of machine that you're gonna be using. Thank you for that thorough, um, those, those answers. Great. Thank you. There, one other thing I'd like to clarify, and this was a part I was going to address later, but when we start testing for our employees, we're actually going to have available both types of tests in the diagnostic, which I think everyone has been talking about, which that's the nasal swab test. And that tells you if you're carrying the virus at that point in time when you were tested. I know everyone has also probably heard about the antibody test, which I know that there's still the science is not so definitive on being able to tell that if someone has antibodies, one to the level to their immunity to catching the virus or that strain of the virus. And if you do have immunity, how long? And I've even been re reading a lot on this. However, based on the science known today, it does seem to show that if you do have a certain level of antibody, that you do have a certain level of immunity. So we're actually going to be procuring as part of our plan, or at least part of the plan is to get an antibody machine as well. Because even if someone, as you know, is not testing positive today, if you have antibodies in your body at a certain level, it will show that you have been exposed and probably have some level of immunity. And we think that could be very helpful. We're talking about population control spreads and things like that in particular, even in our county offices. And so how many machines are we looking at? We're actually looking to procuring one diagnostic machine and we're procuring the um, industrial size. So a lot of tests can be run on the machines at a particular time and also one antibody test machine. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, we are kind of segueing into the second portion of this report. Uh, but for purchasing for Homeland Security, well, not purchasing, but Homeland Security, I don't know if Mr. Sturdivant is still on the uh, phone, but I yes, want to see I if there's any, I want, thank you, sir. I wanted to see if there's any more questions for Mr. Sturdivant, because I need him to get back and do a shipment to Highland Park or something uh, <laughs> for, uh, for, for the uh, equipment. Uh, any commissioners have a question for Mr. Sturdivant? Okay, hearing none, thank you very much, Mr. Sturdivant. That was a, a very enlightening report. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Colleen. Have a good evening. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you do the same. Uh, so I guess we're back to uh, Ms. Allen and uh, kind of a report from uh, the administration and from the department with Ms. Osterberry. Um, if you would like to... Uh, I don't know how you're going to do this, but uh, either you, Ms. Allen, or Ms. Osterberry, if you want to kick off. I did, um, for the uh, commissioners, uh, I also did send uh, some bullet points over to be discussed uh, that I was looking for today. Updates on the county health department activities. We've heard about some of those already related. Uh, some estimate about how much money the department has had to expend related to corona uh what's the health of the workers in your department like anybody testing positive how many of our workers have tested positive out there uh out in the field uh you know our discussions with the state in terms of the requirements in our health department when businesses reopen the restaurants and such uh and i did ask about the senior homes as well because that's been a concern uh, and then the jails, which we've discussed a little bit too. 
So uh, I'm going to ask you a question, Ms. Allen, and then let you take it from there into your uh, uh, in, into your report today. Uh, based on your last uh, points that you were making, Ms. Allen, about the things that we want to purchase, the machines and whatnot, is that money that we have now, or is that money that's going to be dependent on version four or whatever of the CARES Act that we're going to need more funding out of Washington for the things you're talking about currently? My understanding is that this would be funding that has already been allocated to the county. Excellent. So if you would like to take it from here, a report, uh, you know, from the department and how things are going in our health uh, veterans department. Okay, thank you. Actually, I will turn it over to let Carol begin because ev as everyone knows that public health really is on the first, uh, the front line. And, uh, and yes, then we'll go are. from there. But as part of our uh, report here, we will have responses to Commissioner Colleen's questions that he has submitted to us in advance. Okay. Let's turn it over to Carol. Thank you. Hi. Carol here. So, um, and as many times I start out my uh, talks with all of you, we have, um, yeah, we've been doing a lot with education and outreach for our employees, our community. Uh, you know, we're going into this uh, next phase, you know, before we talked about what was COVID, what is COVID-19, how do you protect yourself? Um, then, you know, we came and everyone was staying home. Now, as you said, you know, we're segueing into this whole, you know, it's still here within our community. What do you need to do to, you know, protect yourself, um, especially, you know, even like around first, our own Wayne County departments. And we have created a very nice, uh, like catalog of different um, frequently asked questions, brochures, uh, posters, where our envision is for the departments to be able to order those things and we'll be able to print them and then, um, you know, supply them back out to the departments. Because every department has its own, you know, areas where uh, employees are, you know, if it's built, if it's uh, bulletin boards or walkways that, you know, so we'll be able to get that message out, that good consistent message for everyone on, you know, just where we're at with COVID-19 and then moving forward into this next phase. And with that, then as much of the um, media and all has been talking about are those case investigations. As I've said before, we have a very uh, large, robust, well-trained staff at the Public Health Division. We also have assistance on conducting case investigations from the State Department of Health and Human Services Department. And I'm proud to say that Wayne County was chosen as a beta test site for new software so that it has been allowing us to contact those close contacts uh, oh. much quicker. And then, and that helps then if you're a close contact, being contacted by a public health nurse, you need to self quarantine and stay, you know, at home for 14 days and be monitored. So, you know, again, that is all part of stopping this, you know, identifying the positive patients and then a residents and then getting anyone who was in close contact into that self quarantine so that the spread you know, is contained. And as we've been talking about, you know, then with Wayne County employees, and we really have gotten a very good system set up as, um, you know, Janelle talked about all of the testing with Wayne County employees. Well, we do have Wayne County employees who, if they have tested positive, then where they live, the public health nurse of the county where they reside is technically in charge of the case investigation, but we've developed a very good system where then managers will contact myself or my uh, communicable disease staff, and then we are, okay, that employee and who are the close contacts at work, and we're able to reach out directly to them if a coworker was a uh, close contact of, some, of someone who was positive, then we are able to get them into self um, quarantine much faster with this whole system. It has been working very well. And when an employee tests positive, they are they do remain off work for 14 days, not, and then not until after, after they've uh, recovered and have a negative diagnostic test result are they allowed back. So we're protecting our employees, both those still working and those who, you know, unfortunately are having to you know, fight off the, you know, if they've gotten the disease and, and get better. 
This is Janelle. I just want to add one point there. As Carol said, when employees first started getting positive results, you can imagine that people didn't know how to respond. And so they would reach out, fortunately, to the health department and to, uh, for Carol's direction. So they really have been able to put in place some very standard templates, if you will, with regard to the type of written notice that if it has to be posted at a work location. And so we have a lot of consistency across the county, including, I would say, even with Third Circuit Court and probate court because, as you know, we have county employees that work in those courts. And so they really have been very glad that people have worked with our public health division to make sure that the proper notice is being provided when it's generally like in a building versus also how people are notified that if they are a contact. Uh, we've, we've gotten positive feedback that when they have to post in a location and then it'll say that maybe an employee as well as trying to respect the privacy to the greatest extent possible. So again, these are certain protocols that now the departments as well as the other electeds, they know the process and the protocol. And we think that's really flowing well. Yes, thank you. And as we've been talking about, uh, you know, test sites, test expanding, uh, you know, there are, you know, many more test sites here in Wayne County, even from two weeks ago. Uh, some of the ones, you know, the newer ones that have just come on board um, in Inkster, the Western Wayne Family Health Care Center, that's on Hamlin um, Boulevard in Inkster. We also have Garden City has urgent care on Ford Road, uh, two in Livonia, um, one on Plymouth Road, an urgent care, and one on Middle Belt Road. And as we said before, and it's working again, just a very well oiled process and you know procedure where the new, when the new test sites come on board, they go on the state website. We have the, um, right on our front page of our website, it says find a testing location. It's easy to you know, click on there. I mean, that's where I go to find um, new test locations. And then all of the requirements, if it's appointment only, um, what days of the week, what insurance, if it's free, all of the information about that test site is being maintained and kept updated on that state portal. And you know, it's, it really is, again, a very well-oiled, well-running you know, running machine. So, that part has been, you know, very exciting to see more test sites. And I'm very excited also to be having a test site there right at the main health department building. Then to uh, segue into our long-term care facilities and the monitoring compliance checks that we are doing. Yes, back in March, we started, or no, no, I'm sorry, end of April, we started doing those compliance monitorings. I can say as of today, we have conducted over 50 um, site visits. Many of the common challenges, as uh, Tad Sturdivant talked about earlier, you know, are gowns. Um, you know, gowns are just, they are not available in, you know, they're, they're in short supply across the country. So, you know, we do try to make sure those, um, you know, needs are known, but that that one is a is a tough is a real tough challenge right now for you know even for us trying to help nursing homes uh, get especially gowns for personal protective equipment. Some nursing homes have indicated that part of their challenge is retaining staff, but not too many on that I can say. And we have been asking everyone if they are conducting testing, if they need help with testing, the test kits. So that has been um, a way where then we've been able to as you know, has been expressed by Janelle even, you know, we're out there working on getting our own testing, helping long-term care facilities get testing. I myself have worked with long-term care facilities and being able to partner them up with independent um, third-party, you know, um, reference labs for testing. So I can say ever since we've started these compliance monitorings, we're getting a lot more testing, a lot more um, residents in these long-term care facilities are getting tested as well as the staff. And I think that's making a, a very good difference in you know, getting our handle around where are the COVID-19 um, positives and the infections and then containing them. We also are still continuing uh, with the governor's orders. We do get complaints on businesses and we are doing random unannounced uh, site visits at different businesses, again, most times it is that the business maybe just doesn't understand or eh, maybe it's gotten a little bit 
well, COVID-19, is it's not this new thing anymore, and we have to remind them, no, it's still important for employee health screenings. It's still important for, um, you know, to make sure that um, there's adequate, you know, personal, you know, soap and paper towel available for employees, things like that. We have not gotten blatant resistance to not following any of the governor's orders and any of the public health, um, you know, guidelines and recommendations to mitigate the spread of COVID. But like I say, there are times when we've just had to do some reminders with businesses. And then that is, you know, really where we're at next. It's that whole reopening of local businesses and Wayne County government. I know you're aware that some of the government offices have, um, you know, even started, some Wayne County offices have started opening. And I have been very pleased with uh, working with the Economic Development Department, participating in work groups, uh, questions from restaurants. We are in close communication with the state and with, you know, everything, the Michigan Restaurant Association, um, the FDA has put out guidelines for food service. And a big part of this is not so much what does that business type do, but instead creating a whole, creating an, an atmosphere and of what can we do to maintain a safe workplace? What can we do for our employees to feel safe to go back to work? And then what do we need to do to make customers feel safe to come in? So it is everything from wearing the cloth masks to having um, appropriate hand science, having appropriate hand sanitizer, having frequent and appropriate um, cleaning protocols and sanitizing protocols, having social distancing, you know, everything from making sure chairs, you know, if you have uh, chairs six feet apart to as necessary engineering controls, you know, sneeze guards, in my personal opinion, I think the day of the uh, of a walk up salad bar, you know, we might not we might not ever see those again. You know, there are certain things that are change will be changing permanently because of this um, pandemic, and it's getting everyone just very aware of you know how important it is to stop the spread of a communicable disease. Um, about vaccination, there's been some you know. I think in the, the media and news talking about, you know, uh, development of a vaccination, uh, we are, you know, obviously staying on top of that as, you know, from the state, from the federal government down to the state. And with that in anticipation, we are working on, we are doing a full inventory of what uh, supplies we will need when the vaccinate, vaccines come for us to be able to do those um, countywide point of dispensing uh, vaccine clinics. We have approximately 17 locations around the county that are point of dispensing where people actually go to have the vaccine. And then we have over 60 locations that are considered closed pod. And what that means is that we have an agreement with a business or with a municipality where they have already told us this is how many employees we have and this is how many family members all of those employees have we will send a representative from our um, you know, agency to the warehouse, pick up that, much, that many doses of vaccine. We then will be able to administer it to that group of that closed pod. So that's another very effective um, mechanism to use to get vaccine distributed out in a short amount of time to our community once that vaccine, you know, comes available. Um, some of the other, mm -hmm. oh, some of the other public health division programs, just a quick update. I'm going to tell you WIC, um, as I said two weeks ago, our WIC program is going strong. Uh, WIC recipients are receiving benefits. They are all receiving those remotely. And the state has determined that the WIC program will continue as that, you know, almost like a telemedicine, telehealth, um, you know, for benefits there. We will not have WIC programs in person through the end of the year is what we're told, which, like I say, the system has been working well. And, you know, again, we've got the, all of that down, all of the staff are trained and we're having, and I think the clients are enjoying not having to try to come out, you know, of their homes when we're all being told to stay at home. Um, and I will end this with, then we are also making plans though for the public health clinic there to open on Monday, May 18th. 
So with the, uh, you know, the testing will be starting and then we'll also be having the immunizations and the sexually transmitted disease and HIV appointments. So I think that is all I have. Thank you, uh, Ms. Osterberry. Uh, Ms. Allen, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I do not. All right. Well, I bet you're going to we have a question or two here. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I was going to say we did have uh, Jennifer Caruso, so the clinical services director, who uh, had presentation. But I believe everything she was going to address has been a, already addressed through the FQAC questions and the inmate population. So we're all available for questions. There, there we go. No, let's cover everything six times. Um, so uh, I will go to uh, the vice chair of the committee. Uh, are you ready, Commissioner Baker McCormick? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have no questions. All righty. Then we'll go around to Commissioner Anderson. I'm good. <laughs> I uh, appreciate all the information. I appreciate what you're all doing. Uh, Carol, I know you uh, put in a lot of long hours and I'm sure there's others that do as well. I don't mean to discount them, but I certainly uh, appreciate your uh, contact and, and the hard work that you've been doing. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. I appreciate that. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Dobb. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you so much for the very detailed update on everything. I have no questions. All righty, thank you, uh, Commissioner Marecki. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you everyone for the update. Oh shoot, my dogs are gonna start barking. Okay, I'm trying to get this Pick in. Pick the right time. Pick the right time. <laughs> David barked through the whole meeting. Um, my question is, it, I just need this for clarification. Is it the state that made this um, this? I don't know what, what it would be called, where, where, these, where people are leaving the nursing homes with COVID, going to the hospital, they're coming back um, and they're being placed in certain nursing homes. And some of these nursing homes haven't even had a case of COVID to begin with. Is that all under state directive that that's happening? Yes, I can address that. Those are, yeah, they're called, I think, regional hubs. And yes, that has been all through the state. We've been notified of those locations, but we were not you know, we were not part of those decisions. Okay, and are, are they all at nursing homes right now? Or have they put them in, into any of these uh, centers? Like, I know TCF is gonna be, I think, disbanded, I thought I heard. Yes, but, yes, um, TCF is closing down. I, I'm, my understanding is they are nursing homes, but I'm not like 100% sure that all those are, I think they're all long-term care facilities, but I'm not, like I said, I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, thank you, and thank you for all the information. Thank you, Commissioner. I just have a few questions here, uh, but I'll also say to my committee members, uh, for our next committee uh, meeting, uh, I am planning on doing updates again. Uh, I'm of the personal belief that uh, good information out there is a salve to uh, help lower the, the, the rate of uh, concern if people know what's going on and the more we can tell the public uh, we can lower some of that concern um, I'm gonna uh, uh, Ms. Osterberry uh, the, the question of testing has come up um, can you from your professional background you know the concern I have is that we're rushing things too quickly and getting them out on the market uh, Canada cancel the contract they had for their nationwide testing because there were so many it was either false positives or false negatives and they had to start all over again uh, uh, professionally as their health officer uh, can you make some comment as to uh, how good the uh, the vital testing is how good are the instruments we have to actually do that now Yes, the, you know, the research I've done on it, and whenever, you know, we're looking at, you know, testing, I always go to the FDA website, and then look for the certification of that test method methodology, and the manufacturer of that, you know, testing machine. 
So that is the reliable source and uh, everything is available online. And I hear what you're saying about how quickly, you know, some of these different, you know, testing, mm -hmm. you know, methods have been coming on, you know, have been coming out, but anything that we, right. you know, would recommend anyone is always been certified by the FDA. Okay, yeah, because it's not good to put something out then have to pull it back, and that doesn't give the public confidence. Uh, I'm also going to raise the question of um, vaccines with you. We're still a ways away from that. And given how we deliver vaccines in this country, it's more than likely going to be a hyperdermic injection, and we don't know yet whether that's going to be uh, a single injection or if it's going to be something like the... Um, uh, the shingles vaccination, where you got to come back three weeks later. In uh, Ms. Osterberry, and all the talk that you're having with your colleagues and information you're getting, is anybody at all in this country thinking that 16 months from now we're going to need 600 million hypodermics so we can actually deliver this stuff to people, not just have the vaccine in vials, but actually be able to administer it? Is there any talk of that at all? Right. Like I said, I mean, you know, for ourselves, we are obviously going through our inventory, but I, I know vaccine is a very hot topic. And like you say, it's not just producing the vaccine. It's then having all of the, you know, the needles and right. the, all, you know, how to administer that vaccine. So those are all conversations that are going on statewide, nationwide. Yes. Oh, they are going on. Yeah. Cause I know it's early but this is not something to be behind the curve on either. You know, um, no. oh, now we got a vaccine. Who's got the needles? We can't have that. Um, and, and I do want to ask you directly in your department, Ms. Osterberry, uh, how many people have you had test positive? I can say for the health department, I was aware of two employees. Just two, huh? Okay. And you have a total of how many employees in your department? Oh, my department, we have about 150. So you have two out of there. Is anybody, uh, uh, are people, uh, do you have people at home too uh, that may have been exposed, but they have to do their two weeks at home? Do you have folks like that too? Not that I am aware of, um, okay. but you realize that... Well, you would that, know. You'd have them. <laughs> right. Um, but also realize that, you know, we have, we really have been working remotely when the governor's orders, you know, went down, you know, for stay home, yeah. stay safe. As I said, the WIC employees have not been in the office and have not seen clients for weeks. So, you know, for our right. department... Well, we are there on the front lines and, and, you know, still providing those direct services, we were really, for those programs, we were able very, we were able to quickly turn it, you know, so that people are working from home, my, myself included. Yeah. I mean, you know, so that, I, you Excellent. know, we had a lot of, uh, in, in a way, right, it, it kept us home. Um, we provided services. We learned how to Zoom. We <laughs> did all of this. And, um, yeah, I think that that really... Well, as we know, um, uh, for all sorts of public servants, servants, elected officials, people in your department, you, you probably do have some people out in the field. Um, for people that are in public service right now, uh, because we are expected to be, uh, car you know, continue to carry on and do our job. Uh, are at a little higher risk, uh, as we all are familiar with, of people that we know in government. Um, so, okay. Uh, one, thank you, well, Carol. You know, thank you for what you're doing. You... Yep. Go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask one more time if anybody has any questions, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Uh, I, I did want to follow up on a question I think that was asked by uh, one of the commissioners uh, about the uh, direction are people being shifted to uh, from nursing homes 
uh, to either long-term care or whatever that had, uh, had been found to have COVID. Uh, could you, Carol, provide us with a, a list of those sites that they're being sent to? Uh, I, I think there might have been some concern that they were uh, being directed maybe disproportionately to some areas. Uh, and and I, I guess I would be concerned as to whether or not they're being put into a, um, a population of disabled uh, seniors that uh, are in, in one of those facilities that are, that are COVID free. Uh, and I'm sure there's precautions that are made to keep those uh, patients uh, separated. But I just wanted to ask if you have a list. I think you mentioned you had a list of those uh, around the yeah. Southeast Michigan area. If you could forward those to us. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Well, and again, I'm gonna go back to what I was saying at the beginning. Any of this information that you have, um, if you could just send it to 15 commissioners, um, PDF uh, or Word, or and uh, a social media file, uh, so that this information can get out to the public. I think the more information, the better. Uh, before we uh, wrap this up, Commissioner Baker, Mr. Mr. do you have any Mr. questions? Chairman, Mr. Chairman, this is Commissioner Baydoon. I raised my hand over half an hour ago, and uh, I was just Yeah, waiting. but dude, I'm on the phone. I can't see you raising your hand. So <laughs> just hang on, Commissioner Baydoon. We are going to get to everybody's questions, because I know I got Commissioner Scott out there and Commissioner Hayes. Uh, let me go one more time. Uh, to committee members, uh, do you have anything additional, Commissioner Baker McCormick? Uh, yes. Um, to Carol, just want to thank you for all of your hard work and efforts. Um, and just a point of clarification about mental health capacities um, in Wayne County, uh, we're going to have um, a, uh, I think, an epidemic of mental health issues related to COVID and from, you know, from, from deaths related to, you know, health from all of that, we're going to have a lot of mental health issues. And I'm just wondering, do we have the capacity to, to help those in need and, uh, are we preparing for that and what does that look like? Yes, those are good questions. And yes, we absolutely you know, do. We have a very good close relationship. It's no longer um, uh, Wayne, um, I think it's Wayne Integrated um, Health Services, which was the Wayne County Mental Health Authority. We have been remaining in contact with them. Like I say, that's, that's a longstanding um, you know, good open relationship. And, you know, certainly we will use all of those same, um, you know, uh, resources and channels. And I, I do agree with you. I think that that is going to be another um, issue that we will be, you know, will be facing as we transition now out of, you know, this phase into like our next phase is going to be, you're exactly right. And so, yeah, we are aware of that and, you know, have got the staff ready for, be able to make those referrals. Thank you. And Commissioner Baker McCormick, we are seeing this at the Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network. We are seeing it. Uh, so I think for two weeks from now, we can invite somebody from uh, uh, to give us a report from the uh, Mental Health Authority in terms of what they're seeing and how they're dealing with it, uh, as well as all these funding questions. So uh, you might want to send me a note to remind me of that, Commissioner Baker McCormick, but I think it would be appropriate to have the Mental Health Authority give a report at our next meeting. I Anything else, that. Commissioner Baker McCormick? Okay. No, that's it. Thank uh, you again. Thank you, Commissioner Dobb. Any last questions? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Marecki. I'm all set, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Baydoon, you still on the phone? Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Carol. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, 
I have a lot of questions, but I don't think we're going to have enough time here. I'll call you uh, separately, uh, Carol, uh, to talk to you about uh, the testing. Um, but I, you, maybe I can just ask one question uh, here. Um, ask as many as you need to, Commissioner. And it's been, it's going on two hours, you know, we've been here for two hours. I don't want to keep everybody here. Um, but Carol, you know, I've been posting uh, this report on a daily basis. I'm a little bit concerned about the numbers in Dearborn. And a lot of residents have been asking this question over and over and over again. How can we break down these numbers to know, for example, we have several senior housing facilities in Dearborn. Can we figure out like how many people were infected in those facilities? Is that even possible? And then provide a, now on the state website, they actually are listing all of the licensed um, you know, long-term care facilities and right there it lists how, which ones and how many um, positive cases. They so do? They, they do, yes, on the state website, it is. Okay. Uh, for some reason, that, the numbers... That, I'm, I'm sorry, Commissioner. That's that uh, Michigan Gov backslash coronavirus? Right. Okay. Well, okay. What is that website again, Carol? Yeah, it's um, what? www.michigan.gov backslash coronavirus. Okay. Um, the, uh, some reason, the numbers on, on Sundays, they seem to, seem to be very low, and then they spike on Monday. Is it because of the weekend? They don't have uh, cases reported on the weekend? That's what we anticipate, yes. Um, that has happened every weekend since this pandemic started, and, you know, it's not just Wayne County. I think it's statewide. You know, that number just dips, and, you know, then, yeah then you get that next, you know, that Monday and Tuesday kind of, it goes back up. From our perspective in the county, can we, for example, like in Dearborn, we have like three or four zip codes. Can we break down the number of cases by zip codes? Right. And I know that's been asked numerous times with the IT team and, you know, how they have it broken down and what, you know, the request was by that municipality. So I know we've been discussed, well, we have discussed that. I can bring that back up to them. And what is the number of to uh, testing facilities in Wayne County? You mentioned earlier in one of the other meetings about 29 right. or 30 facilities. Right. I looked, that's right. When I looked yesterday, it was 29 testing sites in Wayne County. And the other question that's always coming up, I don't know if you have these statistics on the average. I know the, the testing sites direct, uh, directly report to the state. Do we know like in Wayne County on a given day, how many tests per average, how many, how many tests are we doing uh, a day throughout Wayne County? Is that even possible to come up with something like that? You know, that's a good question. I don't know, but I can find out if we can find that out. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. You're welcome. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner. And I will say to all commissioners that are on here, anything you want to know for two weeks from now, please email that to me so I can put something together and give the department some sort of a heads up on the kinds of things that uh, uh, people are going to have questions about. So please feed that in to me, all commissioners, for the next meeting. Uh, I, I know we have commissioners. Up. I know you can't see me. I gave you a thumbs up. Oh, okay. Can't see you, dude. Um, I know we have Commissioner Scott and Commissioner Hayduce out there. Uh, do either one of you have questions at this point? No, thank you. But it's a job well done, Carol and Janelle. Really, today we went through a lot of good information. I'm glad I have the chance to listen to all of you and see Tom coaches and many other friends doing well. So, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next meeting uh, to hear something about the mental health. Thank you. Okay, all right. Yeah, um, uh, in the credits for this, uh, we listed uh, Mr. Coaches as a special guest star. Um, I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, Commissioner Scott, are you still there? Do you have questions? Uh, 
I'm going to take that as a no. Uh, any other commissioner out there that's not on the committee that's been listening and needs a question answered or two? Okay. Um, with that, then, uh, thank you very much to the department uh, and to our COO and all the other titles you're holding these days, uh, Ms. Allen. Um, boy, is this rough, right? It's it's rough all around. Um, and uh, it, it's just really good to hear how we're moving forward and how we're getting our uh, arms around this uh, the best we can uh, with the limitations of funding and everything else out there. Uh, so thank you guys very much, and we'll look forward uh, to having a discussion in a couple of weeks. Uh, Madam Clerk, what's next on the agenda? E, such other matters as may be properly submitted before the committee. I know of none such, so we will move the agenda. Public comments. Okay. Um, uh, who's keeping track? Do we have anybody that has uh, emailed or phoned in or whatever for public comment, whoever's tracking that? We might wish to, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, take off all the mutes, uh, unmute in case someone's yeah that could be well i was asking in the beginning because there is a mechanism for people to notify us if they want public comment okay. um and i was going to see if anybody notified us and then i was going to do exactly what you're suggesting uh commissioner anderson so do we have i don't know who on staff is keeping track of this has anybody notified us that they want to have public comment I'm going to take that as a, see, that sounds like a no to me. Uh, can we unmute everybody that's on the phone to see if there's. Yes, I'm going to uh, unmute I, it, all right. I'm sorry? I said I'm going to unmute everybody right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's an unmute. <laughs> Okay. Uh, hello, folks. We unmuted all of you so we can hear everything you're saying. This is going to be almost impossible. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I got it. Folks that are on the phone, you have been unmuted. Now, the thing is, they could be calling for calls. Like I know somebody was out in the seven, Okay, four, mute them again, please. Uh, mute everybody again. Call from different areas. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, um, you have a comment in the chat the, room. I don't know if that was intended to be a public comment. And I don't know if the person sorry? mine. Well, uh, we can't just unmute everybody because that's unmanageable. Um, do we have any way of identifying that person? I don't know, but I know we got to allow people the opportunity to have their public comments. Um, we could probably just read her comment into the record if the clerk wants to do that because she wrote a comment in the, the public, um, your chat room. Okay, that would be good. Yes, and, and I do want to provide the opportunity but you heard it when we uh, unmuted, right? Uh, a lot of people um, are not listening out there. and you, There's just no way uh, that we can have a conversation. So uh, if uh, staff could read the public comment that came to us. You want me to read it aloud? Please. This is from Tabitha. She said... I am an essential worker working in behavioral health services at the Children's Center in Wayne County. My employers were notified by DWIHN, DWIHN that they will still implement a rate reduction for our BHS, SED, and DDS programs on June 1st. To reduce revenue, especially at this time, is not only insensitive, but not in the best interest of those in which they serve. In, e in these unprecedented times, there has to be something this body can do 
in the form of financial assistance as well as legislation to put budget cuts and rate reductions that will affect these vulnerable populations in Wayne County. Uh, thank you for that, yeah. And that's just a little preview of what we'll talk about in a couple of weeks. Um, just like the county is suffering uh, funding issues, uh, kind of the mental health funding in the state is, well, it is insane how uh, how it's going. So we'll get more of a snoot full of that uh, two weeks uh, today from today so people understand more. Was there anybody else that wrote a comment in? Looks like she was the only person that wrote something in the chat. Okay. Uh, council, should we try to unmute everybody again uh, to fulfill our duty for public comment? Yes. Okay. Is there some way we can notify everybody on the phone, hey, you're unmuted now? Mr. Or Chair. are we just going to <laughs> Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, Glenn Anderson, I, I believe uh, if we watch those particular uh, boxes where our faces, our photographs are, or, uh, video, right. it'll have a green on there if, if the person is talking. And, uh, and, and I believe there was one gentleman uh, named A-M-A-Y-A-H, A-M-A-Y-A-H, uh, who was the, where all that sound was coming from, I think. And they could just maybe okay. mute that yeah. one. Okay. So, well, uh, let's give it, let's, I, I guess, you know, what council says, um, I guess we'll, we'll have to, to um, uh, unmute everybody and ask for a public comment again. Okay. Well, I'm going to unmute everybody now. If you don't wish to speak, please remain muted. Okay. I didn't know anything. Yeah. Yep. There we go. We're unmuted now? Yep, everyone is unmuted. Okay, any member of the public that's uh, attended this meeting? I knew it was meeting, so You hung up on when I called you back. I said, okay. Well, I'm so mad I got these damn honey buns. Hey, we don't eat them. So if you don't get them, I'll throw them in the trash. And that was, that was their next step. It's been about four or five days. Yeah. Let me try it again. The names keep falling down the list, but I did find the name that you were talking about. Okay, there we go. Okay, everyone. Uh, all right, I'm asking for public comment from anybody from the public that would like to comment to the Health and Human Services Committee of the Wayne County Commission. Is there anybody that would like to chime in for public comment? Is there anybody that would like to have public comment for the Health and Human Services Committee? I'll make one last call for that. Anybody would like to have public comment for Health and Human Service Committee of the Wayne County Commission? All right, if we can uh, put the mute back on and uh, Madam Clerk, what's next on the agenda? Adjournment. So uh, uh, support, Marecki. All right, uh, without objection then we stand adjourned. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.